What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of AI Buzz. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today we're going to be looking at using PyTorch with the new M1 MacBook. Besides TensorFlow, this is probably the most popular request that I've gotten with the new MacBooks. Unlike TensorFlow, PyTorch is not yet ARM optimized, so there's no specialized library for Apple Silicon, and thus we cannot use the Apple Silicon GPU. Therefore, this is going to be just a CPU test. Nonetheless, I'm very excited to see how this performs since we know from previous tests, the M1 did really well. The first PyTorch example I have for you today is from a GitHub thread where a bunch of other users have posted the performance of their personal machines. I think it's really valuable to be using the same benchmark example as lots of other people because this way you're gonna be able to see how the M1 compares to a wider range of PCs. Specifically, a big shout out to the GitHub user Huang Shin for sharing this code. I'm going to be sure to share a link to this code in the description. So this is one of the benchmark codes. This is going to use Torch to add together two very high dimensional tensors, and it's going to cycle through this 20,000 times. This program is not too tricky, but it's going to take a long time for the machines to compute due to the size of these tensors. I'm going to be comparing the M1 with my deep learning workstation that I've shown in previous benchmark videos. So this machine has an overclocked as well as a liquid cooled i7 7700K processor. So this is a very worthy competitor to the M1. First up, let's see how the workstation performs with this test. And we're off. Okay, so it's finished up now. The utilization was approximately 90% for most of the test, and it finished in 20 minutes and 59 seconds. Not too shabby. Now let's run the exact same test on the M1 MacBook Air. And we're off. What's extremely interesting about this test with the M1 is that it appears to be using all eight of its cores. So this means the four low performance as well as the four high performance cores. And it's using all of these cores to almost 100% utilization. All right, so that has finished up already in seven minutes and 33 seconds. This is 2.78 times faster than the overclocked and liquid cooled i7 7700K in my desktop workstation. It's a pretty shocking result for the M1 for this CPU test using PyTorch. I was very intrigued by the utilization of all eight cores in the M1. My theory was that the M1 deemed this computation as too simple to delegate to just the high performance cores. So I wanted to make sure that I found something more complicated that it would utilize just the high performance cores for. From the PyTorch website, I found some sample code where a neural network gets trained. So this code that you see on the screen now has all the traditional elements of training a neural network, including a forward pass, gradient adjustments, backwards pass, as well as updating of the network weights. I made sure to crank up the number of loops that would go through this training process to 5 million so that we'd be able to get a good sample of how the machines are going to perform under these heavier loads. This is a much more complicated test, so I'm, I'm really excited to get this one done. And let's see how the i7 performs first. And we're off. Okay, this one took 42 minutes and 32 seconds. Now, the M1. The M1 has finished up in 11 minutes and 59 seconds.
This is 3.55 times faster than the i7 processor. And I did notice that just the high performance cores appear to be utilized in this test. Again, I just really need to pause and highlight how fast this processor is relative to a very, very good overclocked and liquid cooled processor. <laughs> It might be time to update my rig because it just got shown up pretty bad by the M1 processor. All right, there we have it. We have the PyTorch performance test completed on the M1 MacBook. If you're as impressed with the performance of these computers as I am, I'm gonna be sure to put a link in the description box to where you can pick up the exact model that I used in this test. I also wanna hear from you guys what videos you wanna see next, particularly benchmarking videos. I really love doing these types of videos and wanna do more, and I'm looking to you for suggestions. Also, if you liked this video, consider giving it a like as well as the channel A subscription. Thanks so much for watching, have a good day, bye.